<laughs> Thank you very kindly. So, um, uh, mostly I hack on things that don't exist, and sometimes I build things, and sometimes they work, and sometimes they don't. And I haven't got my reading glasses, so if I stop and stare at the thing, that's because I'm old and uh, terrible. So um, I'm going to talk quite a lot about depression. Um, so if that's going to be a bit painful for you, then uh, please look out for yourself. Um, it's I'm quite happy to talk about bleak things because they happen to me, and if that's a bit grim for you, uh, I'm, these things happen. Um, also, this clock hates me, but... So anyway, um, a few years ago, uh, I was working in Bath. Um, and what happened was, as Jethro doesn't say, um, all the technical team, apart from two of us, left pretty much in a two-month period, which was kind of terrifying. And I took to wandering around Bath just to get out of the office and so I could stop thinking about Zen or Redis or PHP or managers that I hated and wanted to die a slow and painful death. Um, so one of the things that Bath has is parades of terrible shops selling terrible things. And one of them was a toy shop. And in there, um, there were enameled signs for things that didn't exist and or didn't have enameled signs and there were wooden toys that you'd give to children and they'd kind of stare at going, well, where do the batteries go? And there were tin robots, um, which children weren't allowed to play with because they had lead paint or they were just sharp objects because they were just terrible things and shouldn't have been in a toy shop in the first place. And I kind of wanted one. So I bought a tin robot that looked like it was about to have a psychotic break and set about anybody or its all with a welding torch. And so allied to this, we were doing DevOpsy things, which generally means that um, you're supposed to have one of these to do your deploys with. So that's fine. Yay, lots of deploys. Yay, big red switch. Yay. Um, however, our deploy rig would have needed this. <laughs> and this was awful. Um, but we were kind of working on it, and there were only two of us out of a team of seven left, and we were going to catch fire and die. Um, and in this state, I thought the best thing in the world would be to build a robot that would beat around the office and discover who had broken the build and call them a bollocks. Because obviously public humiliation is a great thing to do for um, employee well-being and to make so public humiliation makes software better. Everybody knows this. Uh, that's sarcasm, by the way. Um, public humiliation was why my ex-employer's code was in a terrible state anyway. So A and B came together and I thought, Sweary bot, here we go. And I ordered a bunch of bits off the internet because that's what the internet's for. And started hacking away and it kind of all went really well and it was great. And I think, so this is a test rig. Unfortunately, there's no sound, but what it was, it nearly mostly worked. But it had a strange failure mode where this thing, what you can't hear is that it's mumbling to itself in bad speech synthesizer. And what it tended to do was just rock back and forth swearing quietly to itself. <laughs> It would take, you know, it would, it's beetling about my bathroom. It's just attacking the first thing it can find, which is my feet. And it just won't take piss off for an answer. <laughs> so it would just find a dark corner and just hide in it and just go, 
bollocks, shit, bollocks, shit. <laughs> and it was at this point I realised I'd built a depressed robot that couldn't cope. <laughs> Store that image away for later. Um, so, the grim thing about this is that there is no happy ending. Um, I fell into a particularly nasty depression at this point um, and never finished it. And what's worse is that the bloody computer stopped. Um, I'd posted about it on LJ and many of my friends were like, yay, it's very robot, brilliant idea, that's completely you, JHR. And I'm like, thank you. And about 12 months later, after I'd recovered a bit more, um, no, it's just not playing, is it? Or rather, it's playing, but won't stop playing. Let's see what happens. Computers, right? So anyway, um, it was awful. I saw all these happy messages about the stuff I hadn't done, and it was like awful, and made everything worse. And Reading that sort of thing can really, really make you hate yourself because you then were like, yeah, I can do a thing, it's great. And you now is like, well, I fucked that one up. And you've let your friends down and you didn't finish the project. I mean, you, you never finish a project. Come on, who are you kidding? You never finish a damn thing. Your house is littered with dead projects and the computer works finally. And you know, you're full of wacky ideas and madcap schemes that never come to fruition. If it was a sitcom, it would be funny, but it wouldn't be funny because sitcoms aren't funny. <laughs> and you let people down, you're a loser. You shouldn't be allowed to do this sort of thing. You just shut up, not bother your friends with your exciting things because they never turn out right. Just stop, don't bother your friends at all. Be quiet, shut up, do your work, do nothing. Depression is a right fucking bastard. Do not listen to it. So. The good thing is, I got better. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> so, a few years, I mean, it was a couple of years ago now, um, I'm trashed at the bar having finished a volunteering at a science fiction convention. And the best thing in the world slipped into my head, which was a cuckoo clock that calls you a twat. <laughs> I mean, Who on earth wouldn't want one of those? <laughs> so, eBay's amazing. I mean, eBay's terrifying, but eBay's amazing. It turns out that there are many cuckoo clocks. Um, they come in pink. They also come as built, I mean, this um, is a, a German chap's art project, and he made cuckoo clocks out of disturbing buildings from, I think, the ex Berlin. But anyway, and about this time I discovered the joy of the ESP8266, which is a microcontroller, <laughs> they're about nine pence, and they've got some much more grunt than an Arduino, but less I.O., but ah, it was fine. Um, and that was just gonna be fun, but, Damn things come with Lua, which is horrible. Um, I did write a thing here about banging on about favorite toy languages because I can't be doing with Lua um, because reasons. Um, Pearl drove me up the wall. Pearl made me hate myself, which is just, I'm, I'm, I'm sure the design, designers of the language didn't envisage that, but it does. I, it was the only thing. Um, for a long time, and anyway, I discovered Ruby because that's what all the configuration management stuff was written in, and it was night and day. And there's, I think, this notion that a language that fits your head better is less likely to gaslight you, um, and is better for your mental health. This is certainly my <laughs> thoughts on it, which are worth whatever you pay to get in, nothing, yay. Um, but anyway, um, where was I? I built a cuckoo clock. Um, I built this cuckoo clock. Now, this video will probably also break the same way as the other one, 
but very eventually, oh, stuff it. Yeah, we'll get that. So while this thing isn't doing its thing, um, there's <laughs> finally. Oh, and, uh, don't worry about the next. It doesn't work. Um, uh, nail varnish was a week old by then. So this thing, breadboard it up. Breadboard it up. Sorry, I don't know why I'm gesturing at that. It's over there. Um, Everything worked. It was great. Um, I had a cuckoo clock. It called you a bastard. On the hour. Um, and I boxed it up, Vero board, soldering, and it didn't work. And it was just like, well, you know, there's two black wires, which are the hour trigger. I've got them the wrong way up. Anybody could do it. Really turn it upside down. It didn't work. Well, getting on a bit, I need magnifying hat to see small soldering now because old age. Um, it'll be my manky soldering. Anybody can do it. I'll just stare at all the joints and it'll be fine. And it didn't work. So that demon, that thing that tells me I'm rubbish, came back and said many things repeatedly along the lines of, look, here you are again, it doesn't work, you're a Muppet, what are you even thinking, why are you even trying? Nobody cares, it's just a stupid idea, don't, just stop. You can't, you don't know what you're doing. And we're here again. So, the weird thing is about depression, that it comes along with imposter syndrome and anxiety and a bunch of other stuff, which are rubbish. And here's the thing. If I put the clock in test mode, this is a live demonstration, the like of which Blue Peter had never seen. <laughs> if you're um, of an age to have ever watched Blue Peter. So an accurate representation of the inside of my head when I'm having a bad time and I can get the sodding USB connector the right way up because, hey, I forgot my reading glasses. So, you try and have a conversation with the rest of your head, and there's a thing in the back of your head is just interrupting you the whole time, you can't think straight, you've just got this noise, and you're trying to tell people things. And it's your voice telling you you're an idiot all the time. And everybody likes swearing. However, where was I? Oh, yeah, just here. So, uh, the way I visualize the inside of my head it owes a lot to Unix. Now, okay, this is a leaky abstraction, it's a rubbish idea, don't do this at home, but, um, thank you. Um, one of the things that that models, I guess, is an overloaded system and it's thrashing and half your cognitive function is running in swap and you can't do a damn thing because you're spending all your time trying to shut down out of control demons which are calling you a bastard and your brain is like treacle because you know your half your memory is just thrashing and everything is terrible and so the joke here is that my demons are demons <laughs> which looks funnier written down <laughs> as indeed does the ad lib I wrote down so it's not an ad lib but there we are uh, where was I oh it was over here that's nice so one of the things the demons and I would like to point out that this is nothing to do with uh, schizophrenic syndrome uh, uh, symptoms or anything like that. It's just I have this model of what's going on in my head and it's shouty Unix demons because I'm a spot. And what they'll do is 
get really busy and remind me of some time when I was at a party in 1983 when I made a twat of myself just as I'm overtaking a bus on a windy A road. And it's like, ah -ha! no, you're not killing me that way. Or they'll decide that a slideshow of my worst moments, 1986 to 1995, would be the best thing in the world to show me at about 2 a.m. when I'm trying to drop off to sleep. The little bastards. So, here we are. Imagine, if you will, a thing which insults you with your own voice. Exhibit B. And at this point, weirdly sitting in a cafe in um, North London, eating a salad and drinking tea out of a mug staring out the window, I became enlightened. I kind of realized that actually what I'd been doing is building automata that were external versions of the things that were in my head. No, no men in white coats, that's okay. Um, so, this is actually a thing. Um, I was chatting to a, an actual artist. Um, I don't think she was wearing a beret and smoking a roll-up, but... And I described this, and she was like, yeah? <laughs> Why do you think you're special? <laughs> well... And so... I kind of, it just, it all came collapsing on itself, and it was like, right, so I build things to come to terms with the stuff that's going on. Okay, let's store that one away too. So I was in Glastonbury the other month. Um, you can just about see Glastonbury tour um, behind the Volvo with the reefer. Um, Volvo? Yeah, no. Anyway, Glastonbury's great. It's filled with good yards. And, you know, ex-railway bits and some shops. Um, and a tour, which is there and there and there and... Anyway. Um, so, the thing, the brilliant thing about Glasto is that the shop on the high street, um, it's opposite the shop that will sell you homemade faggots and chips for about three quid. And it is filled with wooden toys and uh, robot arms and squishy little skittery robots that light up. And I wanted to buy one of everything and send it through a time machine to my past self and say, it's all right, just make all of it, break it, paint it green, I don't care, just do it, this is the best thing. However, um, time machines are impossible and my past self would be really freaked out if that happened. Um, so I just sent a pile of stuff to my brother's kids and I kept them for myself. Obviously, because who would not wish for a flying unicorn? And I realized I bought another automata thing, and now I know how this stuff works. What is going to come out? And I was driving back from Glastonbury, um, up the Twiddley Road to Bristol, because of, I live in Bristol, and driving to Bristol if I lived somewhere else would be stupid, um, when I realized exactly what I was doing, which was that. Now, some, none, or all of you may have some notion of the significance of the color scheme, um, or not. Um, have I finished? No. So, that happened, and I'm not sure, yay. So, if there's a point here, um, it's that bugger depression, find ways of explaining it to yourself, that might help. Um, those are my ways of explaining it to myself. Um, and that about covers it. I wouldn't actually ask me for any useful information other than if you're having problems with Kubernetes, because I know <laughs> about as much about that as I do about depression. So um, that about covers it. <laughs> Thank you.
Is there time for questioning? Yes, would you like to do questions? If anybody's got any questions, you're weird. But fire away. <laughs> I was going to fulminate about... Oh, right, so... Um, we must call. I was... And this... So... Software and hardware will gaslight the shit out of you, and it is really bad for your mental health. Two examples. One, Kubernetes itself. Um, the liveness probe. If you read the documentation, it says, as long as your container is, returns anything between 200 and 399, everything's good. Kubernetes loves you and will keep your kit running. Bullshit. <laughs> so, the documentation for this is in a, hold on, 2015, three-year-old PR on GitHub, at the bottom of a lock filing cabinet, etc., etc., etc. And I did not find this straight away, and I wrote a thing, and I stuck it on K8, and it wouldn't start, and it was just complaining because the return code was wrong, and it was, look, it's in the documentation, you're supposed to work, you fucker, uh, blasted thing. Um, and I struggled with this for days, and I thought I was a complete idiot because I can't work simple containers, and the instructions said this should work, reality said it didn't. Well, Google are never wrong, so clearly I'm the idiot. No. <laughs> Google can't write documentation to save their lives. Um, it turned out, actually, that a friend of a friend works for them, and I complained mightily on FaceAke, and he was like, but Google are never wrong. Exhibit A, exhibit B, sort yourselves out, lads. Um, the other thing, oh yeah, Wemos, uh, D1 Pro, alleges to have 16 squillion bytes of memory, which you can't use. This is hidden at the bottom of a GitHub PR from three years ago in a lock filing cabinet marked Beware of the Leopard. And I, I have one of these, and I was building a thing, and it wouldn't work, and I thought I'd blown it up because I'm an idiot and I can't work electronics, and I got a different one, and that worked because it was a slightly different version with less memory. So, anyway. Everything is terrible. Beware kit that tries to gaslight you, it will destroy your brain. And that's not a useful behavior pattern for things that people have made for other people. But anyway. Questions, apart from, is the bar open and will you shut up? <laughs> is that working? Yes. Thank you for the talk. That's lovely. Um, the one about demons. Yes. I'm quite old to be a parent. And I have some small children. And the question was, so when can I show my eight-year-old um, alien? Okay. <laughs> Now, so monster stories for children. I was feeling a bit guilty about this because I thought, well, I don't know. But I met this um, woman from Mexico who's a good Catholic and she said, Peter, look, parenthood is just long, one long series of guilt trips. Don't worry. Right? Now, it turns out um, it seems monsters in children's stories are a way of externalizing things they can't understand. Now, I think if somebody looked on Google, which is never wrong, they would figure out the, the citation for that. But it's an interesting thought that the externalization of things is an important step in our yeah. growth. I'm, I mean, I'd I like to pass that comment. I fully admit that I'm slow and have to work things out longhand for a lot of this brain stuff um, because being depressed for part of the time doesn't help because your brain works even slower and hates itself so but yeah 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 questions can we go to the bar now blast <laughs> so now you sort of see the process working a bit more, does that mean that you can see, see the automata coming earlier? Uh, maybe. I don't know. Um, I, I work in progress. Um, I shall find out. The, the next thing I build, I don't know what it will be. I suspect now I understand what's going on. I want to go back and build the sweary robot out of a sense of spite, if nothing else. <laughs> 
because. <laughs> Maybe one more question, I think. Really quick one. Um, your flying unicorn? Yes. Does it do anything that it didn't when it started, or does it just have a thematically appropriate color scheme? Um, actually, it's got a stepper motor in there, which is why the winding handle doesn't work very well. But if you use the stepper motor for longer than five minutes, it tends to catch fire. <laughs> Excellent. It is a burning uh, flying unicorn. Yes. I, it has. Worryingly enough, I got the colours slightly wrong, so it's got that vibe of, as you say, ground attack. Um, <laughs> for um, strafing people you do not like. <laughs> but I love it to pieces because it's just like, it's a complete thing and it worked. And um, I had a whale of a time just because I knew what I was doing and what was in my head. It was just like, <laughs> <laughs> not exactly like that, it would be weird. <laughs> I mean, that's probably close to Stuart Lee. Anyway, yeah. Um, somebody dragged me off stage. I've had enough. Can I stop now? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, JHR. Glad um, to be here, sir.